last split was just uh, a huge failure for us. It's incredible, is it? The celestial expansion! One, two, three! Caps is forced to run away as Jazz gets the fourth. It's shut down in the end. H2K, get aced! I am usually not good at losing because I really hate it. The Outlaws, Exile's dead, Hilly's dead, Unicorns, they're dying! Proof for myself that we can do it. First place this time. Wait, world yet in any year. This is going to be a bloodbath. Welcome to the final day of week two in the EULCS Summer Split. H2K and the Unicorns of Love are facing off later tonight. But stepping up on stage first are Splice and the Mysterious Monkeys who are preparing as we speak. Splice was getting some rays, a little bit of sun before entering the studio, as well as the Mysterious Monkeys. You gotta stay hydrated, even if you're a monkey, when you want to hit the stage and when you want to get that W as we see the Hubble of Splice. Hello, everyone. I'm Eiffel Shog Supporter. Following today's series alongside Andrew Ferry, Day. We're standing, we have legs, and you have socks. And I have trousers that fit, too. Yeah, it's wonderful. Exactly. I look great. You look great, too. Did you just give yourself a compliment? I did, And I then did. you wanted to I'm mask it by Deficio, saying that see? I look great, too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I look fantastic, but you look fine, too. <laughs> yeah. All right, League of Legends. Yesterday, Misfits Gaming, they took the series against Rocket with a 2-0 victory in the fight for Group A. 2-1, uh, sorry. Uh, I want, didn't want to take that away from Rocket because they did manage to win one game versus Misfits, and that one was very convincing. Sadly for them, it's stop there. Yeah. Rocket, their bottom lane looked good when they were able to get the Kalista and Rakan. Things were going extremely well for them. We've seen time and time again where Wadid, when he's on these playmakers, he really can have an impact. But when Rocket don't get this early lead, when they have a more standard laning phase, it feels like the other teams just have their number. Misfits, they knew exactly how to play around the map. They were so good at being able to set up plays at around just 10 minutes into the game. Once they got themselves an early lead, their pressure did not stop. No, and Maxlor was up against his ex-team, and definitely in games two and three, he was able to set up all the plays and facilitate the games for Misfits Gaming, and that means that they got another victory on the board, same as G2. They ended their week with a victory over the Ninjas in pajamas. Uh, yeah, it was quite scrappy. It was quite back and forth, and we heard Perks in a post-game interview saying, well, hey, we're not on our top form yet. It might even take a couple of weeks before we're there. Exactly that. Perks was saying that we're still figuring out what's OP. You know, we're still suffering from a little bit of jet lag. You also just came out of the <laughs> hospital. There are a lot of little things that are just kind of adding up for G2, but that shouldn't also take away from the fact that NIP will play playing extremely well, especially mm -hmm. looking at how much of a challenge they gave it to NIP. Look, even on your screen right now, 11 to 5 in kills. You can really see that NIP as a team are showing that they are willing to bring it to the top teams and they will make you fight for that win. Yeah, that also makes me excited about next week's matchups, NIP versus Rocket. Finally, we'll see what these guys can do and how they can brawl it out. But with their win, G2 and Misfits Gaming are now one step closer to the top of Group A. Currently, though, still trailing behind Fnatic, who are now leaders for now and also in Group B, we have H2K and the Unicorns of Love. And if we take a look at the matchups today, they will be fighting. The Unicorns of Love and H2K are going to brawl. And we saw it in the intro video there. It's going to be nasty. It's going to be dirty. There's going to be a lot of fighting and there's a lot of honor involved. I'm very excited to see these teams play once again. The fact that the Unicorns have consistently throughout this year been able to beat H2K I think I want to see HDK bring something back. I want to see them at the very least get their revenge one time uh, so that we can see these top four teams really going at one each, uh, yeah. at each other. At each other, indeed. And with those two matches, you guys are going to have four days of League of Legends to pick your big plays of the week from. And we want to know your favorite. So be sure to hit us up at LOL Esports using the hashtag EULCS with all the big plays because we've seen a couple. Yeah, we've had some great wombo combos. We've had some great outplays. Caps getting a solo kill onto Perks. Rawcat bringing out a couple even more big team fights, like a lot of good plays to choose from. Indeed, but now let's focus in on the first match of the day as the Mysterious Monkeys. Well, they've shown so far that they won't sit back and lose, but they haven't been able to win a series yet. Andy, uh, well, they did have 
quite the tough schedule, I feel, coming into this. And today might be the first big chance at winning one versus Splice. Exactly that. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, that so far the Mysterious Monkeys, they've only played against H2K and ULL, two of the top contenders to be leading in Group B. Now they have the opportunity to go against an underperforming Splice. And given the proactive Underperforming place, Splice. That's what I feel right now. All I right. feel like considering Splice have brought in a new coach and their expectations are to improve based on their performance last split, towards the end we saw a little bit of an improvement, but I still feel like they're still suffering from the same sort of issues. And that's where I think Mysterious Monkeys have a good chance because this is a team, they're extremely proactive. They're always looking to try and make stuff happen. They will try and fight you regardless of the circumstances that they themselves are in. And this sort of confident playstyle is exactly what a new team needs to be bringing if they want to improve here in the European LCS. Yeah. Now, if you're spliced, the big issue that you have is that in the early game, you struggle, right? We saw that versus Vitality, where a lot of their early deficits came from them trying to be proactive in the early game, and it ended up backfiring horribly. So the big concern I have for Splice is they get drawn in to the skirmish fighting style of the Mysterious Monkeys, and that's where they'll actually be able to get a, a big enough lead. And I don't think they have the same level of macro and understanding of the game, like H2K and UOL, to punish the Monkeys once you get later on. Yeah, I guess that's what I was uh, wanting to quiz you about, uh, underperforming Splice, but you mean that when it comes to other games like Vitality, we also saw Vitality was still able to get an early game lead against them, and that's not the kind of thing you want to see happen. No, I mean, when you are so as seasoned at this point as Splice, the fact that they were in the finals last year in summer, you expect them to maintain that sort of level. And right now, it's the top four teams in Europe, and Splice is not included in that. And I'm sure that bothers them a lot, but when you've held on to the same roster, expectations should be a little bit higher. So if you are Splice, and if you're a Splice fan, going up against the Mysterious Monkeys, you'd be expecting to get yourself a dominant 2-0 if you want to assert yourself back into the top regions of Europe. Yeah, and the big question is, will Splice get sucked into the madness of the Mysterious Monkeys? And when we look at that roster in the mid lane, Koskyu is someone who's always willing to go in, is always willing to pick something for the mid lane that can make the plays, even if it fails. And he's going up against Senkuk, so how much of an edge could he have there? I think he could have quite the big edge because he is known for being an assassin player. And in the past, these two did meet in the summer split of Challenger series and it was actually Senkux that was able to come out on top of Coscu, but there's been a lot of evolution for both these players in that period of time, and I feel like that Senkux considered a very average mid laner in Europe, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but when you look at Coscu, he's very polarizing. He's either going 0-10 or he's going 10-0, and zero. and he's the kind of guy that will force you into making these kind of fights, and I feel like Senkux, I want to see him try and match that. Can he hold his own against this wild, aggressive style of Coscu, or is he just going to get Blasted in lane. Oh, we'll see. Uh, it does sound like a two and one splice prediction when I hear all your reasons summed up. Is that correct? I, I'm thinking very much a uh, two zero for splice. Oh. That's what I expect from them if they're on form. Uh, but it very much depends on how much Splice get bited, uh, baited into the Monkey's playstyle. All right, well, we'll see what happens. The players are about ready to hit the rift, so let's go over to our casters and get this series started. Thank you very much, Shox. Hello, all you esports fans out there. I'm Devin Pyretangus Young. With me, of course, is James Dress O'Leary for our first series of the day. And it is, once again, looking like it's going to be a zoo, Stress. Yeah, well, we're going to have to see whether it's going to be the snake bite or some snake bait coming out from the mysterious monkeys at this point, because this could be one-sided, but the monkeys always leave things a little bit chaotic. Mm -hmm. Especially, we see that they are always willing to fight it out. Now, let's see how it all shakes out. Checking out the lineup, starting off today, fighting from the blue side in game one, we have those mysterious monkeys, which means up in the top lane, it is Jisoo. Joining him in the jungle is Llama Bear. In the mid lane, it's Koscu, ADC, Yuki 60, Support Dreams, and their coach, Unlimited. And that means on the red side for game number one, a splice in the top lane it is wonder in the jungle is trashy in the mid lane is senkux 80 carry cobby support mickey x and their coach is jeevas mm -hmm. not yamatsu cannon it's jeevas clearly we General need to update that one jeevas <laughs> is going to be leading the snake army into they battle are definitely going to need it because splice have had a rough going only picking up the one win yesterday against vitality and it honestly didn't look incredibly convincing. There was a lot of back and forth against what is perceived to be one of the weaker teams in the group. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's why you've got to look at how dangerous are a team like Mysterious Monkeys right now, because the analyst desk, or I guess the, you know, Evia and, and, uh, and Vedius were talking about the strength of schedule that Mysterious Monkeys have had coming into this. And it's difficult when you're playing against the top teams in the group to really judge how this team can actually play because they have shown some kind of strength. So now as we head into the draft, I think this is phase one for Mysterious Monkeys. If they can get a good draft here and then show some good strategic play, this still could be that series. Absolutely. We'll start off by banning away the Rakan. It's followed by the Zac on Splice's side. See, and there's an Ivern ban away. So a couple of jungles been hit so far. Yeah, and we're looking at that Rakan, we saw Rocket using it very effectively in yesterday's series, even without Zaya pairing it with the Kalista. That's one of the things we're looking to uh, have teams avoid going into f the second set of picks in phase one. Splice may have been able to pick up the both of them should they have both made it through. But with Zach, Elise off the board, we saw Elise in game out of Trashy the other day. Graves still available, as is Kha'Zix. I wonder why Mysterious Monkeys are actually going to put their priority for Llama Bear as we go into the first set of picks. Thresh up. Will it be Thresh or Jungler for the Mysterious Monkeys? Well, Mysterious Monkeys have consistently been able to play Thresh, and now with the LeBlanc band away, it leaves the way open. It's going to be the fifth game on it for Dreams. He's only played this champion in summer. And now you've got to look at it. Zaya and Kalista are both available. Varus, Ash, other AD carries available to pick. So Splice have the pick of the litter at this point, but they might get forced into taking it in their next rotation. Now, that's an interesting pick up on the Zyra into Thresh. We have seen this a, a few times. It is a lane that can be okay, but certainly if Thresh hooks the Zyra in, it's pretty much a kill lane we've been seeing with that Callista, with the Twitch, with the Zyra. Yeah, showing some confidence on the Splice side, but maybe that's overconfident. Now, Mysterious Monkeys pair that Thresh up with the Twitch, so Yuki will have the ability to just spray and pray like we saw in the past. It can be very dangerous. Splice are going to have to watch their backs. One thing that we haven't had too much of a chance to touch on is Wanda's champion pool. You can see down at the bottom of the screen, this is the last four games he has played. He could be on the Galio this game, but that could also flex to mid lane should he want to pick something like the Javan, like the Fiora, that they'll be able to last pick for themselves. But at this point, there are enough AD carries available that you could pick a mid lane here if you want it to be safe or the jungle pick, and make sure that Mysterious Monkeys can't pinch too much more. Well, see what Splice end up doing. You talked about Trashy, that one game on the Lee Sin. He's going to have yet another, so he does lock it in, meaning the Galio. We still don't know 100% where that's going to be going, and it's back to ban phase two. So in ban phase two, Splice likely to start targeting the top lane pool as Fiora gets eliminated from the draft. Likewise, Mysterious Monkeys may hit mid laners here if they're anticipating the Splice will put that Galio in the top lane. Syndra may very well go. We might see the Talia that Senkux had high priority on in their last series that did very well for Splice being banned away here by Mysterious Monkeys. Well, they're taking their time about it for sure as the seconds tick down. It's looking like they're going to get rid of the Ash, trying to hit the AD carry pool now. And the reason that they're banning Ash over a Zaya or a Kalista is the fact that paired alongside that Zyra, they synergize just a lot better for that pushing lane, the setup where you're able to just always engage at level six. I wonder where Splice will end up going from this. We've seen a lot of Caitlyn out of Kobe in splits gone by. Mm -hmm. With the Casio banned now on Splice's side, means Koski won't have a chance to try that one out. However, the Syndra's still up and available. Do the monkeys ban it here? No, it's the Caitlyn. Yeah, Caitlyn goes now. If Talia gets picked up here by Splice, we may see Kozku default over to that Katarina. That isn't the case, though, as Kozku now has the option to maybe go for an Orianna, something a little more stable. Syndra is available for the first stable time. Stable and safe. That doesn't sound like Kozku, man. But he will pick Syndra if it's up, like, and, and it feels like it fits the moment. Because look, they need crowd control, they need a little bit of extra damage, not necessarily too much, but this is a safe blind pickable champion. Now we have to see where Splice end up flexing this Galio to, as Mysterious Monkeys, if they believe it's top, Gragas might come out here. There is a Rumble option available, as that hasn't been banned out either. That would be a hell of a lot of damage on the monkey side, would certainly suit the playstyle they want to go for, but Talked about some CC. Ooh. How about locking everybody up in the pit? Jisoo's going to get his hands on Jarvan. Now, you got to be careful that this uh, Galio doesn't go elsewhere because Galio into Jarvan is a very difficult matchup. Um, oh, is this going to be it? We've heard a couple of rumors. Seen in other regions. Of people playing that Sejuani again. And I did get the option 
to speak to them about it, but nope, that was in an article a couple of weeks ago, a couple of changes, and this is one of the things they had to be careful of, was if this Kled can match up against the Javan in top lane, Kled theoretically should have a stronger side lane the later we go in this game. Mm -hmm. And it might mean that it neutralizes a lot of Jizu's presence. However, early game, Javan should still be able to output quite a bit of damage against this Kled. Not a lane matchup we've seen around the world too much. A lot of Javan, not so much on the clan. Yeah, but it is a wonder special. It's something yeah. that he was bringing out in the ULCS long before a lot of other people were, and he even tried his hand at it at Worlds. Not too much success, but maybe he'll have a little bit better luck here in the ULCS summer split up against Jisoo's Jarvan and the rest of the mysterious monkeys. But that is a lot of damage on the double M side. Looks like they're all set up to try and pick off some targets. I think Splice is going to have to be very careful on all fronts. Yeah, when you look at it, you've got the Thresh, you've got the Syndra to look for picks. That kind of kill lane in the bottom lane should be where Mysterious Monkeys are starting to divert some of their attention. But look, they've got snowball potential out of every single lane. Javan, Syndra, Twitch. You can get any lane ahead to carry this game, whereas Splice playing a little bit more utility based around the middle lane for Senkux with this Galio. We'll have to see what Trashy can do on his Lee Sin. Yeah. Looked okay last time we saw him play it. Yeah, you know, I got the pleasure of talking to Trashy after their last series. He admitted some mistakes, but was still confident, still comfortable with the team and the pace that they are learning at right now. We'll see if it will be enough to take out the Mysterious Monkeys. Splice definitely need a win. They want to silence some of those critics, but the Monkeys are hungry and not for bananas. They want to get a W on the board. Does it start right here, right now? Let's find out. A lot of people, when they see Zyra into Thresh, they're like, oh, that should be a good matchup. You can spawn plants, block a, a hook, you know, have all of these funny interactions. The real difficulty, though, for Zyra specifically is with the lack of sustain. Uh, if you have more than one fight in the laning phase, you kind of tend to get heavily punished on that. Of course, Door and Shield, that type of thing, has adjusted the sustain in the bottom lane, but it's now on Dreams to see what engages he can get against this Zyra, because otherwise, Varus and Zyra will just naturally push better than Twitch versus Thresh. So it all depends on Dreams in the bottom lane, and that's what we're going to have to track on the side of Mr. Mysterious Monkeys. Well, this is a comfortable duo pickup for Mysterious Monkeys. We've seen what Yuki can do on any sort of a hyper carry, starting to blow people away when he does get a good angle on him and dreams on this Thresh. It's definitely not been a slouch on it, although Thresh has just been popular across the board uh, as the rise of playmaking supports has really started to come into play here. We'll see how this game unseats itself from the beginning. It's all very standard, no sneaky tricks. <laughs> you think that Mysterious Monkeys would be that team that would go for the level one invade, especially with the damage they got. Yeah, but they don't necessarily need to with this setup. I mean, you look at it, it's kind of reliable in the sense that Syndra isn't going to lose lane to a Galio. Sure, it might be difficult to kill the Galio, uh, but you're not really going to lose out. Mysterious Monkeys will get pushed in in the bottom lane, but they should be able to contend with that. And then Jizu into Wonder is maybe the, the last anomaly that we really don't see too much of. Um, of course, Javan... The theory is bullies away tanks in the top lane, but against bruises doesn't do amazingly well, and that's where a Kled can look to take over. Well, Wonder's Champion Pool has definitely been something that a lot of people have had trouble really pinching, seeing past. Mm -hmm. I mean, Wonder just plays a, a, a heap of champions right now, and, and in all honesty, in this meta where there's so many viable top laners, it becomes a very difficult matchup to try and predict. But as you said, the Jarvan, to start off at least, should be able to get the punish on. But I want to keep an eye down on this bottom lane and see how it shakes out, especially considering Kabi's insane range on what Yuki can bring early on. If they can keep the poke going, it may not be a chance for Dreams and Yuki to start the plays. Well, this is the early push coming out from the Splice bottom lane that uh, really Dreams can't punish yet. With only Flay at rank one, you can't really punish Kabi for stepping forward like that in the wave, and Splice know that. It would have to be a jungle gank off the, you know, extra experience quintessence that comes down into the bottom lane this early on to really punish. And that's not what Mysterious Monkeys have done. Uh, that has happened in a couple of games that we've been seeing, where you get the very fast level three in end of lane, but Mysterious Monkey's not going for that. You can see Llama Bear is still farming up in his jungle, whereas Trashy, he's picked up all of the camps that make it look like you've done really well farming quickly. He's at 17 CS already. Oh, that right. jungle CS, man. <laughs> yeah, that's just Raptors and Crocs. <laughs> <laughs> Numbers are deceptive in the jungle. Trashy will add one more, and that's the Scuttle Crab down on the bottom side. So Splice have secured themselves a decent amount of bot side vision, but let's take a look at the mid. As 
cause Q. Being poked a little bit by Senkux going in with the taunt. It's interesting because I think Trashy actually manipulated his jungle pathing ever so slightly to just be aware of whether Llama Bear had been on the bottom side to take that Rift Scuttler. Um, he actually pathed through mid lane into Vision, which isn't something you normally want to do because you're obviously giving away free information. But Trashy very quickly runs down to the Rift Scuttler, takes it, realizes Llama Bear isn't down on that half of the map and can suddenly retreat back into his own jungle. Now that obviously doesn't tell him exactly where Llama Bear is, but you know he's not going for that cheesy opening. Mm-hmm. Llama Bear playing a number of games on this Kha'Zix so far. Not really 100% sure what to expect from this guy. He's obviously just kind of been back on the main roster since the changeover from Misfits Academy to Mysterious Monkeys. And really the oh. part we don't know too much about <laughs> as there is why you take the Zyra hey, plants. Hey, 100% accuracy <laughs> if you're looking for plants. Oh, poor Dreams. Um, dreams just testing his green fingers out, doing a little bit of gardening. Getting ready now that summer's here. Yeah, I guess you gotta keep that bot lane clean. Fresh of all the weeds, it's difficult when you got a Zyra down there. Wonder, off of Skarl right now, getting chased down by Jisoo. He might have to burn that flash. The pocket pistol gonna push him back, and Skarl's incoming. Not just yet, he's having to flash away as Llama Bear comes in. Yeah, nice respect. Wonder respecting the fact that Llama Bear, if he hit the W with the slow, may have been able to flash leap Q if it was available to get that kill. That's why he flashed it even though it didn't look like it was going to kill him. But now, of course, returning to base, Skull comes back, and Wanda is now back up to full health. Did buy himself double long swords, will be able to output a little bit more damage, but Jesus will offset that with his own recall here. And you can see the early game is going towards the Javan, as we kind of expect. Yeah, Splice looking to try and build themselves up those little leads. See what they can get done. Everything else just about even for the time being, actually. Kabi being matched by Yuki and CS, and the same thing's true with Senkux and Kazku, and it's been a very quiet mid lane. In fact, it's not something we're used to seeing between those two, uh, but especially on Kazku's side, this guy has honestly been trying to fight it out constantly against all of his opponents. He's not going to do that too well against Galio. Uh, <laughs> it's a little hard to shred through that gargoyle armor, that's for yeah. sure. Galio, uh, been seeing a rise in play in the mid lane as well. We've seen him at support, we've seen him in top lane, but I think for this matchup specifically, this should benefit Senkux quite heavily because he's not necessarily a laner that we've seen dominate a lot of games. And you can see Koskyu on the other side is KDA, particularly low mainly because he loves to just throw himself at situations again and again and again to try and get the monkeys back into the game. Yeah. Also, it is kind of fair noting that, like, Kazuki's kind of had this trial by fire here in the ULCS yeah. as well. Like, the, the opponents he's played off against, that is kind of the rough thing when you think about it. They played up against Unicorns of Love and H2K to yep. kick things off. You know, Febum and Exile, two of our better mid laners. So, Kazuki, this might be one of his better oh. chances here as Wonder goes in onto Jisoo right now. They're Bear Trap six. on the rope. Here comes Trashy looking for the setup, and there's the Jarvan cage, but Trashy flashes right on out of it and secures himself first blood. So Splice making this lease in work for themselves as Jizu was pushed up in the top side. Wonder just goes aggressive, is able to get in, they get the damage down. It's an easy pickup on the top side, and that is possibly one of the worst things that could happen for Mysterious Monkeys right now because they haven't been able to get anything working in bottom lane. Mid lane is neutralized, and therefore you'd think that they need to have top lane ahead at the same time and Jizu now with a death to his name has now fallen down in CS against Wonder because of the time that Wonder's had in lane with no opponent and suddenly Mysterious Monkeys are gonna have to find openings elsewhere. Talked about them having a lot of pick potential but it's difficult when you're the ones getting picked off to start things. Llama Bear hasn't really had much opportunity to be inside of a lane but he's had laners push back all across the board, you'd think he could be places. And look at this, with no flash available on Jizu, in the next couple of minutes, there's quite a devastating gank attempt that could come out from Splice. Take into account, Senkux can easily roam up with the heroic entrance. You've got Wonder still has charge available. He can then drop tower aggro, has damage reduction that will come from Senkux. So there's a lot of power up in that top side should they wish to go for it, but they were maybe looking for mid first. Just outside the range of the Shield of Duran. Now Kazuki is going to take a little bit of poke from the Winds of War off the back, and the rest of Splice have mobilized towards the mid lane. A lot of pings flying here in this river. You can see Dreams hanging out just on the edge of it right now, but it's all Splice vision. And this is where Splice just have to be careful of where Yuki is. And you can see now that he reveals himself on the lane, Splice are a little bit more, uh, less cautious about where they're going. If that Twitch had roamed up, the numbers advantage was potentially there because they don't have either teleport available, only that Galio ult. Of course, Jizu doesn't have his TP either. 
but you can see how they play when the Twitch is in vision compared to when the Twitch is out of vision. And that's really the hallmark of uh, when playing against Twitch, what separates a lot of teams is uh, you can't play recklessly against uh, a Twitch when you can't see him. Oh man, there were a lot of layers to that one. Yeah, and it's also confusing because Reckless plays a whole lot of Twitch. So yeah. yep. you can play like Reckless, but just don't play Recklessly. As long as you can get away with it for sure. Now that tower is getting punished down on the bottom side as Yuki and Dreams just continually getting pushed in. No appearance from the Kha'Zix just yet. Although there is a lot of Mysterious Monkey's vision up towards that top side where he's hanging out right now. And as he goes into the enemy jungle or gets close enough to it, he'll find there's not a whole lot of camps to try and counter. Splice playing this one out very safe, respecting the pick potential of Several numbers of Mysterious Monkey. You talked about the Snowball mm -hmm. can come into effect well. Unfortunately, Snowball doesn't work too well if you don't start any of those kills as Suncooks chases Cosq out of lane. I think Cosq will be very happy with Snowballs right now, considering the skin he is playing. It's a little warm for that kind, of, but... that kind of wear, but you know what? I'll give it to him. Hey, we're air conditioned in the studio. It's a little bit <laughs> cooler in here than it is outside, but I think that vision that you were talking about, Devin, is a lot focused around the weakness perhaps that we already highlighted. The fact that Jizu no flash is a, an easy target, but look at what Splice is doing at the same time. This bottom lane push that we were talking about is working out so well because Dreams has been neutralized in the lane. Cobby and Mickey have done a good job of just shoving out and never letting this Thresh land a hook. And that kind of makes it difficult for the mysterious monkeys to do anything. Absolutely, and you know, with the way things have started off here, it looks like the objectives are looking to go the way of Splice, slowly pecking away at that tower. Now, Llama Bear has arrived down towards the bot, but he's just backing away, and you can see Splice have even managed to get some vision inside of that bottom jungle here. And if all things go as continuing right now, it's going to be an easy first tower blood, and they can probably pick up a dragon on top. But we're 10 minutes in, and just off farm advantage in that first blood, we're about 1,000 gold up for Splice. And importantly, look top right of your screen, just going out of view, is the fact that there's a control ward behind Splice. They recognize that they're pushing heavily. They even bought Berserker's Greaves to make sure they can maintain the push in lane even stronger than they normally would. And that means there's openings behind them in the lane. But with a control ward, no teleport available for Jizu. He wants to go aggressive because he knows Wonder doesn't really have survivability. Does have a flash, has to use it right now as the pocket pistol wasn't able to get him far enough His away, but Skarl's again. back up, and now Jisoo wants to joust, throws the bear trap on the rope, and Wonder is going to pick up a kill, forcing Llama Bear over the wall, Ooh. followed by Trashy, who is looking for a Senkux. A big pick up there wasn't going to be enough. It looks like now that fight is going to be over as Mickey gets pulled in. Chains of Corruption land, rooting the Twitch right now. Dreams wants to make this all in happen. Heal comes out now. Mickey on the wrong side of things. Oh, Yuki. But, oh, my goodness. He nearly eats it that way, but it doesn't matter. At the end, Yuki is still That's able to so get the low. position. And Kabi picks the kill up. The Ooh. tower has one more shot, but Yuki just can't close in. Yuki cannot close the distance. Oh, Spice are rolling the dice here. They still have a lot of you know, power in this setup. But look at where Senkux was on the map, actually thinking to bring in the Galio and get that kill, but it's all about the tower after what was somewhat risky positioning from Splice at the beginning of that play. They hold their nerve, they make sure they don't go overly aggressive and then turn it around. But here comes Trashy. Kick Cause was available. Flash followed kick and instantly just his punch as Senkux picks up the kill. Well, Splice making it look easy and you know this is the top lane play wonder loses skull very early on but keep in mind skull charges up quite quick in these extended trades like this you can see wonder already close enough and that's why jizu backs away they don't know where trashy is they're able to turn this back around and jizu no flash means no escape they were trying to drag Senkux up into this fight for the top side dive, but actually Cosq beats him out of the lane. That forces Splice to fall back away. And then I believe we go down to the bottom side here. As look, Mickey steps forward too far and dreams. A hook onto the plant doesn't do much, but is it a flash flay that comes out? No, it doesn't even need to flash. Mickey just a step too close to dreams. And that was what started this whole situation off. And now uh -oh. we have four kills for Splice to zero, but they are looking to equalize right now. Wonder is caught. Hops off of Skarl to try and get over the wall there. At the end of the day, it's not going to be enough as Llama Bear picks him up. That's the first kill of the game for Mysterious Monkeys on the Kha'Zix. And that's exactly what they needed to do now. They recognized that Jizu was falling behind in that lane and couldn't really regather any strength. So bring the duo lane up there. You know you've already lost bottom lane towers. So try and get something in response. This might open up a Rift Herald for Mysterious Monkeys after it. But how 
tough would Splice like to fight this? That is the question, because look, they're only bringing two into the lane for now, but in the minimap, you can see here comes Mickey, and Senkux was starting to move towards top side, and Mysterious Monkeys have to back away. Yep, have to respect the fact that Splice can mobilize a little faster than they can, and without the mini wave there to back them up, it means that Splice will be able to defend. So with the kill advantage, with the tower advantage, we have ourselves, you know, close on 3,000 or plus 3,000 on the lead. For the Splice Boys at the moment, Mysterious Monkeys, no strangers to falling behind in these early games, but they are finding it difficult to fight out against Splice. Significant advantages in a couple of lanes as well. That gold lead, you can see 900 gold up in the top lane. You can see the bottom lane, the AD carry, significantly far ahead. About 1.4k gold yeah. for Kill Kobe. Yeah, some CS advantage will do that for you. And now it's going to be Rift Herald. This may go into the mid lane. Uh, we've seen a lot of teams using it on the side lane because I think the European teams in scrims this week have been a little bit more focused on defending against Rift Herald plays. And you can see the teams start to mobilize towards the weaker lanes when Rift Herald is taken. But at the same time, I think if you just shove this mid, Senkux is probably going to struggle to push out Cos-Q consistently. And that tower's already d had a lot of damage dealt to it. So Rift Herald plus maybe one wave and a champion should be able to push that down. Yeah. Keep the Splice game plan going right now to just try to keep those advantages building on them and not allowing anybody from the Mysterious Monkeys to pop off as Jisoo goes down to chase down Wonder. Besides, maybe he doesn't want to face him in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Yeah, Wonder knows he has the advantage but doesn't want to risk Llama Bear coming in from the side. That's why he doesn't take that trade effectively because, look, the two control wards at least uh, deny some of Splice's vision on the bottom side. There are a handful of wards that have spotted Llama Bear going up to the top side, and that gives Wonder the safety to go back into the lane in the bottom lane. But uh, honestly, Wonder not playing this out riskily, not making sure that uh, Splice give anything away. Yeah, and this was kind of the game plan from the get-go. It seemed that Splice were trying to play it out as safe as possible, even from the pick and ban phase. But that just isn't the monkey style. They want to try and make the big plays, get on those highlight reels. But unfortunately, right now, all we've really seen have been a little bit more of the fun fails as the Rift Herald gets popped towards the mid here. Senkux and Trashy there to help lead the Rift oh, Herald in. Charge. And Wonder goes charging, looking straight for Dreams, who plays him back the walls on, but he's able to zone them all away. Unleash the power on Trashy, but Koski's only able to do half his health and damage and double taunt lands as the tower falls. The Rift Herald is still charging and Mysterious Monkeys their health bars are in shambles as Yuki looks for a return play, but he's only going to find Senkux. Oh. <laughs> Senkux manages to uh, escape for a moment there. It looked like he was going aggressive into the rest of Mysterious Monkeys, and that was what we were talking about Splice needing to do, break that mid-tower open, give Senkux the freedom to go between lanes now a little bit more easily. Of course, Galio doesn't exactly have too much trouble with that. No, he doesn't have a whole lot of trouble in general right now, but Mickey X might have uh, some unless that's a lot of he's damage. turning right back onto Llama Bear, and in comes Kabi. Cast thrown down, and Yuki's able to deter any more action, but right now, Splice are running the table. <laughs> Llama Bear did not want that trade. Thought he <laughs> wanted it at first. Um, and then he got knocked up. Realizes he's pretty low on the old magic resist right now. And <laughs> Mickey's able to take the trade. It seems like this is just a big risk, though, of the kind of composition that Mysterious Monkeys like to draft. I mean, they have a lot of damage, mm -hmm. but who's really going to soak up the return fire, unless they don't get the picks off early. The snowball just isn't going to be there. Yeah, that's fair. Um, one item that was just picked up by Senkux that is a bit of a point of contention for a lot of people right now, mm -hmm. the Adaptive Helm. Helm has been picked up. Now, obviously has uh, some strengths against Syndra because the, you know, the greater number of balls, the more instances of that amount of damage you're reducing, but... It protects uh, Freak, great against balls. Freak actually did uh, the maths behind Adaptive Helm, and. Against a lot of the magic resist items, it's not necessarily as effective against Syndra as just getting flat amounts of magic resist. So I'm interested to see how this will work. Of course, there are a couple of other damage over time things. Yuki's poison will get affected by that, and that type of thing will get mitigated. But interesting to see that's the way Senkux ends up building to start this game off. Mm -hmm. It gives him magic resist. It gives him what he needs anyway. Yeah, and he's going to be the big primary tank as well. You know, we've talked about Wonder going on these damage dealers lately, and that seems to be the splice archetype. Of course, Black Cleaver, Tiamat, he's going to be a beast wherever he decides to push. And you can see Jisoo giving ground as Splice continue their game plan. 18 minutes in, they're not showing any signs of stopping, but it is a slow and steady march forward. Kind of squeezing life out of the Mysterious Monkeys. 
but Splice also at the same time have tempered a lot of the aggressive plays. They're 5,000 gold up, but they're also not rushing head first into scenarios. Like the top side, they knew Kozuki was there already, so it would have been a four versus four. Wonder and Jisoo couldn't really have gone away from each other, but hang on, look at where Sankox is moving on the map. Wonder wants to go in, they baited out the Javan ult. Yep, instantly Jisoo knows he cannot take the 1v2, so Senkux is able to force him away as he has to flash out of his own ultimate. Yeah, it took long enough though for uh, Senkux ult to channel and get him down into the bottom lane, so that now no longer is available, and without his TP at the same time, that means Senkux is on wave clear duty for a while now, until that <laughs> ult is back up. Doesn't really have that much more strength without that heroic entrance. Can't get half the map across and uh, make his entrance known. Yeah, well, for a time being, he's going to be stuck a little less mobile, but I don't think Splice will really mind it right now. They've got so much pressure on this top side. Big wave of minions, Kabi's leading in to the last remnants of that tower, and as 19 minutes pass on the game clock, Splice will finish off the last of the outer towers. Mysterious Monkeys have been unable to find a single answering tower, and that gold lead just keeps on creeping Kuski up, but maybe this is the chance. Teleport in, trashy. Kazuki spends the unleashed power on him. Dreams wanted to go in, but it's just going to be it. Yeah, both teleports cancelled from the top laners here. Uh, Splice maintain Wonder's presence down in the bottom lane, and Mysterious Monkeys don't really get baited into that fight uh, up in the top side either. Uh, there's just no opportunities for these guys right now. They keep trying, they keep committing, but unfortunately it's just going to be spent teleports, spent ultimates, nothing doing as Splice continue their slow strangulation on this game. Yeah, at this point, you can see Q hasn't had much of an impact here. Neither has Jizu. And bottom lane has naturally been pushed in just time and time again from Kabi and Mickey's side. So we were talking about how Mysterious Monkeys had all of this ability to snowball. Well, Cannonball more like in the middle lane. Looks like it right now. The bear trap on a rope extends a little too far, and Wonder's going to have to back away from Koski, but that was two summoners burned for the Mysterious Monkeys mid laner, and all of a sudden, the rest of Splice, they're mobilizing down towards this bottom side, looking to catch on Jisoo. Yeah, if they can get Jisoo, it might be enough. Hang on. Oh, hey. they know. Here we go. He's going to have to flag and drag away. As Coach Unlimited looks on, can't be happy with what's going on right now. Monkeys have just been foiled at every turn. And this is a matchup we were talking about being a winnable one for the Mysterious Monkeys. We were saying how Splice, uh, you know, theoretically a middle of the group contender, did well against Vitality the other day, but maybe Mysterious Monkeys could come and surprise Splice. And we haven't seen that in the beginning of game one. Splice were somewhat prepared for the priority on Thresh, the, the Monkeys output. All right. Now they're going to try and fight constantly. Priority on Yuki right now, but he's starting to do some damage right now. We can see what happens when he's allowed to pop off. Now Mysterious Monkeys have found that they can go right back in. Trashy okay. locked in the pit. Do they have the damage to finish anyone off? But Wonder comes around the backside. Mickey X is going to take down Jisoo, and all of a sudden Splice have a second wind. Two kills picked up for zero. Yeah, Splice, ooh, careful. Got to dodge out that hook. They managed to hold on, keep Trashy alive barely as uh, Jisoo jumped into the fight, got instantly kicked back out after his ultimate and Trashy on uh, the slither of health was able to get himself out of that and Splice hold on to their lead, extend it ever so slightly more yeah. and that means Mysterious Monkeys right now, you look at it and, and they're only basically on one item apiece whereas Splice is starting to finish their second item on a lot of their carries here. So this was how Yuki didn't get kicked by Trashy initially. Trashy was trying to line that up for himself, but Yuki flashes early, and it's a good thing because if Trashy had already used his kick, Jizu probably would have killed him instantly in this pit here. Jizu over the wall, flag and drag into the old exhaust comes through, and Trashy lives to fight another day. Ooh, good scout of the week too, but that was Kazuki's yeah. last. I mean, they just. The problem is now that they're starting to find these little angles to fight, they're just so far behind. You talked about only being on one mm -hmm. item, and you know, you're gonna have those types of fights where you just are trying and trying and trying, but you just don't do as much damage as the enemy team. Don't do as much damage, but you've also got to deal with a Galio. Yeah, so on top of the Galio, now he's got himself a frozen heart. Uh, Stone Cold, it's gonna hurt when they try to go in on him. So 22 minutes into this one splice. They got extra mobility too, thanks to that Cloud Drake they have for themselves, but the game state really hasn't changed much since the lane phase is over. You know, it's not only his build, the Stone Cold. Don't really know whether I'd want to go to a party of Sankux's. He's not exactly got the, the greatest width of menu. His punch, it's just ice. Oh my god. <laughs> I didn't know where you were going with that.
Good for some to Dear stay Lord. alive today. Yeah, though. I mean, I, I could I could use some just eyes for sure. All right, so back into this one. What do the monkeys need to do though? They they keep trying to fight, but it just seems like it's never enough. It's never enough. Sorry, I was debating whether <laughs> I should apologize for that. Uh, just let point. it breathe. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, uh. Well, at least Koski's keeping cool. At this point, four mysterious monkeys. They just have to have one fight that goes their way. But when you look at it, a 50 CS disparity in the top lane, can't fight on the side lane over there. You, your bottom lane is basically losing by the same amount. There's a massive goal difference between the two of them. and. Syndra's up against the Galio. There's no real easy, squishy target. And now that the, the charge comes through again for Wonder, they want to fight even more. Uh, he or just maybe bounced not. right off the dream. So that was a zoning ultimate. <laughs> um, yeah. Get a little extra damage on the tower. But more to your point, I, I feel like the X Factor's got to be Yuki, though. Like, we've seen him able to pop off even when he's been behind a good chunk of the game. But he needs more time. He needs more items. He's just sitting on the Blade of the Rune King and the Zeal. And that's the problem is, look at it. As you said, low on itemization. There's already armor starting to be built. There's two Ninja Tabbies. you got a Frozen Heart that's going to slow him down when it comes to getting out a lot of those autos in fights. And, and it means that Kobe will... Sh Theoretically, he'd be able to output just as much damage. Mickey's now building himself towards Leandri's at the same time, so it's not even like it's just an AD carry threat that is on the side of Splice. They have damage coming from almost everywhere. And then an unkillable Galio in the front line, who's just going to taunt everybody up, and Yuki will have no option but to stand there auto-attacking, and he doesn't have a QSS yet, a little way away from buying that to himself. Yeah, battle plan for Splice seems to be working, but we'll see if they can turn things around as Jisoo's going in, Hero's entrance coming down. Jisoo's going to get knocked up, but does he have the damage for Kabi? It's Yuki who finishes the drop off, but Wonder is coming back in for round two. Bear trap on a rope and flashing forward. He splats the rat, looking for dreams now, as Mickey X will claim the final shot. Llama Bear joined up by Koski, Scout of the Week is only going to stun onto Trashy. It is a one for three trade though, and the Splice Boys are charging for the tower. That damage reduction is so difficult to deal with. You think you get the kill, and as the indicator appears, it already is calculating how little damage you end up doing to your target. Goes. They got Whoop. the taunt. It's got the cleanse. Koski, he's down. He's out of there. Mickey X is having a ball as he picks up another kill. Support. Carry. <laughs> yes. I mean, he's Nearly, got blasting uh, one. That counts. Technically doing better than Wonder. I yeah. mean, Wonder died with the same amount of kills and assists. And but yeah, here's how it started. Yeah, this is how it started. So Root goes down. There's the damage coming out from Mickey. And you can see Jisoo normally would be able to kill Cubby quite handily here as a Javan. But in comes the damage reduction. The exhaust came through as well onto Yuki before that. And Splice were able to just carry this fight through. There's nothing really to stop them. Another big benefit of that Zyra. I was able to... Wonder teleport on top of that plant as it was expiring. Mm. So, Splice able to mobilize just a little quicker, and now the gold lead's grown to 10,000 at 26 minutes. Splice have just been able to out macro, but they've been able to out fight as well on the occasion that Mysterious Monkeys have taken it to them. And even with a couple of kills, that just isn't nearly enough. There's no need to take this Baron right now. There's no need to risk it. They can just keep on resetting and forcing the monkeys to dance to their tune. Well, at this point, they just set up around the Baron in the sense of just control the vision. There's an Infernal Drake coming up next, so that's the easy first objective to just rush down as it spawns. Speaking of rushing, Wonder's <laughs> got somewhere to be. He's going to charge his way out of that. It's a fairly low well. down, so it's... Uh, he gets it back up easy enough, and yeah. this opens up the opportunity for the Infernal Drakes to splice. On top of that added mobility out of combat, they get themselves bonus AD AP. And unfortunately for the monkeys, well, uh -oh. no snowstorms in the works. Uh, They're not able to get monkeys. it down, but Wonder finds five. And I don't know if that's where you want it to be, but Splice are not too far behind. Jisoo's going down, first casualty of this fight. And all of a sudden, the rest of Splice want to take oh, it. Oh, found Yuki. Suncooks isn't even in this, but the hero's entrance is going to come down. And now, Llama Bear Yuki dreams all on the retreat. Mickey X is going to get shut down by Koski, but they don't have any follow-up damage. Yuki gets one more on Trashy before Senkux takes out Dreams. It's a two for two on the fight right now, but that is about to turn as Koski goes down. Splice, 13 kills up on the board, looking for more as Llama Bear's isolated, has to hop that wall. Messy fight, but Splice with enough damage to just carry it through. Not a lot of the crowd control actually landed the way they wanted it because Mysterious Monkeys were trying to kite back through the jungle. But you can see Kobe just has enough damage. Wonder, he had himself the Gargoyle Stone Plates, so despite being in the middle of five people and not really wanting to be there, gets that massive boost of health that comes through and all of those resistances as well. Look at how tanky he is. 
it doesn't matter that he does less damage at this point. He's just trying to survive. And then Splice start to walk through the rest of the Monkey's lineup. Kick doesn't quite manage to land from Trash. He couldn't get the flash kick because Yuki once again flashes early, which means Senkux isn't quite able to get right into the fight. But look at how tanky he is. Now Kobe moves up towards Cos Q, takes damage, but it doesn't really matter because of how far ahead they are. Kobe's even got himself the Phantom Dancer to reduce some of that incoming damage at the same time. And Splice have made themselves a difficult composition to kill at the same time as denying Mysterious Monkeys all of their snowballing threats. Yeah, so much in the draft here. Battle plan, so far so good, courtesy of General Jeevas. See if it keeps up in the following games, but this is honestly Splice's game to lose right now, and it's a big one for them. They need to prove that they are where they say they are. I talked about yesterday with Trashy talking about how there's this perception that they are a mediocre team. He wants to change that. It has to start somewhere. Why not against a team that a lot of people would put in the same category? And when you consider this is a team that went to Wills last year, that's not a great thing to be called mediocre. Yep, they want to show some dominance here. They find one kill, but it's going to be fired back as Yuki was untouched in the back until Sunkex turns in on it. Right now, Wonder wants to finish off Koski, but Mickey once again gets Ooh. the snipe for the final shot. Yuki's going to get one clutch shutdown, but I don't think he's going to get any more than that. The rest of the monkeys are going down. It's Llama Bear having to flash away from the hail of arrows, and he will be the only one to tell the tale of that team fight gone wrong. It means Splice will be able to push down the inhibitor and look from the draft. We saw the Javan pick, thinking Splice we're going to be putting this Galio into the top lane. Galio goes mid, and Senkux has been almost impossible to kill. One death on the board. He's even got himself war marks now, so he just heals up in between every fight. And now Splice, they're even looking to push this down. 15 seconds left on most members of the Monkeys means there's only going to be one Nexus Tower to take before they have to back away. But nevertheless, it's all about extending their lead. 12,000 gold. This is going to be a one versus three from Jizu, and I don't know whether he wants this fight. He goes in, flags, and drags, and he is going low, but he tries to turn no. back in. Llama Bear's too late, and... Oh, got to applaud their bravery, but Mysterious Monkeys are not calculating the risk too much, but Wonder, he's got to be careful as well. Joust his way out of harm's way. See if he's able to get the escape as... <laughs> Dreams, you're going to have some trouble in that garden. Yeah, that's uh, more like the poison garden that is in uh, England. Did you know that? There's a garden in England where everything can kill you. That is terrifying. Yeah. Really? Why does that exist? Uh, education purposes, really, because oh, okay. plants are more interesting when they can kill you. And uh, Senkux, he doesn't really seem in too much danger and then walks back into fight. And uh-oh, Yuki manages to snipe him down with the last auto, but that means Yuki ends up dying and the rest of Splice are able to handily deal with Llama Bat. And the rest of the monkeys push in for one Nexus Tower from that. And Splice, you got to imagine, are in the perfect position now to go towards Baron to get that maybe even move towards the bottom lane with Wanda for now, push in the Mysterious Monkeys and look to end the game. Yeah, and it hasn't been a perfect game for Splice. I mean, there's been a few kills errantly they've allowed Yuki to pick up because he's just been in the back opening fire. However, there just hasn't been any opening for the rest of the Monkeys to really do anything. And Splice, they played it cautiously. They played it carefully. They've not taken any Aaron risk. They even peel off the Baron right now because oh. instantly they can blow up Koskyu as Wonder is right inside the box. A hero's entrance is coming in for Sam Cooks, and they take down Dreams. That's a double kill for Kabi, and the rest of the monkeys are scattered to the winds. And you can see double Guardian Angel already out on Splice, which means Kabi has no fear when it comes to killing No Koskyu. one's going to die. Yeah, no one's on the side of Splice. anymore. And they're just confident enough to have their AD carry walk into a Syndra who's level 16 and still be able to just kill her. Yeah, Llama Bear, he walks right into the shield of Durand as well. GC is going to try to turn back on to Mickey X, but the Baron goes down and oh, they just crazy. keep high-fiving themselves into death. I was mistaken because Mickey did die. But so did, <laughs> so did Jisoo. Yeah, I actually thought Mickey may have got that trade then with the two versus That's one. That's how you but... know a game's gone out of control when the support uh -oh. is able to 1v1 the top uh -oh. laner. Uh, Llama Bear, Yuki, you're going to have some trouble getting back into your own base. Trashy's going to get the kickoff. No lantern today. And Trashy gets another kill cleanly as Dream just trying to get the hook under tower. It's not going to matter. Kabi with his sixth kill of the game. And Splice are looking to close this one out as clean as you like. Koski scatters the weak, but there's nothing weak about this side of Splice as the last Nexus turret is going to fall. I'm going to try and pad a couple of more scores, finish <laughs> off Llama Bear before all said and done. He stops for the taunt, but it doesn't matter. Everybody's wiped out on the side of the monkeys, and, well, they just let the minions do the job. Shut down onto Wonder, because Wonder 
We changed the icon, we changed the build path, but Guardian Angel still doesn't work on the fountain. And as a hero's entrance and a hero's finish for Splice as they go one up on the series. A very convincing performance out of Splice. Difficult from the draft for Mysterious Monkeys really to build from that middle lane, from top lane. They wanted to snowball, they threw everything at the game once again, but unfortunately, the likes of a Galio, a Kled that's ahead, a cat in a hat. Just about a everything. getting caught by a bear trap on a rope. Who really knows what happened? Yeah, I mean, this is one of those zany uh, Sunday cartoons, that's for sure, <laughs> the way game one went down. But Splice, you know, they can pat themselves on the back and just say, let's go back and do it again. But the monkeys, at what point does this all-out aggression, we're going to try and snowball you every which way till Sunday, when does that get predictable? Well, I, it, it's already predictable in a sense that you know that they're going to do it. It's never going to be predictable that, that they're always going to fight, but realistically what the Mysterious Monkeys need to, to maybe look to work on would be what they're already improving on with the strategic play in scrims. Like, you can't expect a team to come out and already be great at playing the map coming from Challenger. I mean, they've got a new jungler that hasn't really had the experience in competitive. A lot of the mm -hmm. players have been in Challenger for a while, but that doesn't necessarily have the same kind of experience factor as the LCS, so I think it's going to be a slow improvement for the Mysterious Monkeys until they get to that point. It took Splice, yeah. remember, all the way through Spring Split That's until true. they actually looked good in the Summer Split. Well, maybe they just need a little bit more time, but they're going to have to try and pull it out for game at number two. Splice now found their way to victory in number one, though. For more, we're going to send it over to the analysts. Thank you very much, Pyra. Indeed, it looked like just another day at the office for Splice. Wow, what a clean victory. And Pyra there said, where does this, uh, or when does this Mysterious Monkey style get predictable? I think the key here is that they weren't able to do it at all because Splice had a couple of elements that were working against them. First off, uh, Trashy on Lee Sin finding the exact openings for Splice in the early game. Great to see Trashy being so proactive on Lee Sin. The reality is, this guy has been memed about for his Lee Sin for the longest amount of time. It was always like, we don't need to ban this champion against him because he just doesn't know how to play it. And in this uh, game, at the very least, he demonstrated that he can definitely have an early game impact. And especially when he's playing around Wonder. Often, we, we as an analyst team have talked very much about trying to get this guy going because he loves to play these carries in the top lane. And in this matchup specifically, if you get Wonder even the slightest bit ahead, there is no answer for the Jarvan to be able to deal with this cloud later on. So great investment from Trashy to get Wonder going in the early game. Yes, and indeed. And then he uh, diverted his attention to the mid lane where he also got a kill on the board and helped out Sankux. And I think uh, the strong early game and the proactivity from Trashy was very important to shut down a Mysterious Monkey style. And you also pointed out that there was a reason why Mysterious Monkeys couldn't get as much going, and they usually like to play off dreams in the bottom lane, but that was also negated by the draft. Yeah, the thing that you have to identify with uh, the composition from Mysterious Monkeys is that it's really good at finding picks, right? Syndra, Twitch, Kha'Zix, Thresh, there are so many different things that can just catch a target out of position when they don't expect it. But when you're constantly being forced underneath your tower, it is very difficult for either the Twitch or the Thrash to be able to roam around the map. So by picking this uh, Zyra and the Varus, you're just constantly pushing and pushing and applying all this pressure, making it very difficult for the Mysterious Monkeys to do anything. In the top side, they want to try and maybe have that Jarvan roam around the map too, but then when you're investing all your alternative pressure up there, it's just answer after answer from Splice where they just read exactly what Mysterious Monkeys wanted to do, and they said, nope, we can easily just keep you pressured in the early game not fall into your trap and then get to the mid game where we know we can outplay you. Oh yeah, so to rehash, early game pressure, Series Monkeys can't do anything. They can't make anything happen in the bottom lane. And then in the mid lane, I thought it was quite interesting. The Galio mid, we talked about it yesterday. It's not something that we've seen that much in uh, Europe, 0 and 2 from Nagne, from NIP. But here it works well, I feel, because Koski is kind of, he has to stay in his lane. He can't really go out and all out kill that Galio and he also can't leave the lane. So what he inherently wants to do as a player is also completely negated. Completely true. It's so difficult for the Cinder to be able to get a kill at all into this ghetto because he went for an adaptive helm first and as we were talking about earlier on like it really mitigates a lot of the bursting power of Syndra and makes that kind of picking power so much weaker. Also for Senkix, I felt like his impact in team fights was so much stronger. The fact that he's just providing all this utility, facilitating the big carries in the form of Kobe and Wonder. I love this play style from Splice, and I think it works very well for them. Yes, it does. And there we, of course, see Jeeves, uh, who is talking to his team, who only had a couple of weeks under 
The belt with the team and seems to have come up with a really, really effective draft against the monkeys. Let's take a look at a late game team fight. And this is one of those instances where I feel Splice wins the fight no matter what, just because they were so far ahead. They really were so far ahead. Just look at how much damage Wonder is able to tank up at the initiation of this fight, but also the strength of this composition because Splice, they drafted a team fight composition fundamentally. And Whoever you target, it doesn't matter because a Galio is just going to turn around and turn that fight in your favor. And if you still get an unfavorable fight, you have the Zyra ultimate to disengage too. So Splice, yes, it did help that they had this massive gold lead. And I love the fact that Kobe goes in full man mode at the end of that fight. But it's so impressive to see yeah. how well they can coordinate, get, coordinate in these fights and the way in which it results in a game one victory. Yeah, definitely. So I'm serious. Monkey's just not able to get a lot of kills on the board at all. There's a, you know, usually we see them fight back so much, but Splice didn't give them any openings. And I I think this is one of the cleanest victories maybe against Mysterious Monkeys that we've seen even out of H2K and Unicorns of Love where they got quite scrappy, be it early or in the rest of the game. I agree with you. I think that Spice were very good to not fall prey into the very skirmish heavy style that uh, Mysterious Monkeys do enjoy to participate in. And uh, the way in which they closed out the game, 33 minutes, very average game time. They eventually took the Baron and it was just clean sailing for the rest of the game. Yeah, and I, I even wonder if um, those other games where the Mysterious Monkeys, they kind of try and fight their way out of it. Maybe it's good for them also to, I mean, it's more awful, but a loss like this, because then they can look at, okay, what should we have done in the draft? What should we have done in the early game? Where could we have found an opening? So trying to put a positive spin on it, you know, they, they have to find a way to find an answer in game two. Do you think after what you've seen that they can and where do they have to focus their attention? I think a big thing that they need to try and do is get more favorable matchups for their solo laners if they want to try and play around these a little bit more. And uh, we know that Jisoo can be a big carry along with Kozku in the middle lane. Maybe just take things like Galio off the board, take these safe mid laners mm -hmm. away, and you just force Senkix into a skill matchup where perhaps Kozku could be at a better position. All right, well, we will see what happens. The snakes, they are on, a hunt for, or on the hunt rather for a win. So stick around. Game two is coming up right after this. Get it? I it's think all of them are unicorn fans because it's so many unicorns. people. Uh, it's possible, but after this game, they could be our fans as well. So. And but here comes Trashy. Kick Cause was available. Ball. Flash followed kick and instantly Justice Punch. Now Mysterious Monkeys have found that they can go right back in. Trashy oh, locked yeah. in the pit. Do they have the damage to finish anyone off? But Wonder comes around the backside. Mickey X is going to take down Jisoo. And all of a sudden, Splice have a second wind. I got a vision. I can fight you. I just want to kill it. Nice, nice. Back, 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 cut, 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 cut. Back, 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 back. And that's a hero's entrance and a hero's finish for Splice as they go one up on the series.